In this video, I'll be taking a look at the EVE Audio SC205 5 inch monitors, and I'll be giving you my honest opinion on whether smaller is better. Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. So recently, I've been testing these EVE Audio SC205 studio monitors. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my honest opinion as to why these smaller monitors may or may not be the right choice for you. Now, full disclosure, I was sent these monitors for the purposes of this review, but I'm not being paid in any way. I haven't been required to say anything specific, nor has this video been reviewed by anyone before release. In other words, this is my honest opinion. Now, before we do get started, if you like this kind of content all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. Now let's start off by taking a quick look at the specs. The SC205 is a two-way studio monitor with a 5-inch woofer and an air motion transformer or AMT tweeter. It contains two 50-watt amplifiers, one for the woofer and one for the tweeter, with a crossover at 3000 Hz. In the box, we're supplied with an optional metal grid to protect the tweeter and some rubber pads if we want to place the monitors on our desk. However, the underside of the monitor has a screw thread so that we can mount it on a microphone stand, which is a great option with a monitor of this size. At the rear, we see a large rectangular base port with a curved edge design at the bottom. Eve claimed that this design reduces port distortion and produces a punchier base, and I have to say, I agree. We can connect to our audio interface using either an unbalanced RCA or balanced XLR connection, and you can see some dip switches here also, but we'll get back to that later. Power is connected at the back with a kettle cable, and there we find the main power switch. But thankfully, we can also put the monitor into standby from the front. So let's take a look at that now. The one knob at the front of the SC205 has so many functions that I'm surprised in this day and age they didn't call it a smart knob. Thanks, Eve. I must say, it's sometimes the small things that count, so I'm happy that with one long press, we can put the monitor in standby mode. When switched on, pressing the knob will put us into settings mode, where we can access the DSP features. The DSP features consist of three filters, low, desk, and high. We can also adjust some LED settings here. The low filter allows you to adjust a shelf at 300 hertz, and the high a shelf at three kilohertz. The desk filter has two functions. When turned down, it acts as a narrowband EQ at 180 Hz. This is to help with the effects of reflective surfaces such as mixers. When turned up, it boosts at 80 Hz, giving a bit more punch to the low end. So when you have your monitors set up to your liking, you can use the dip switches at the back to lock in your volume and filter settings so that you don't accidentally adjust them. These settings will also be saved when the power is disconnected. So the most obvious question to tackle with these monitors is their size. They measure 17.5 by 27.5 by 23.3 centimeters. So in a small room, these could be ideal. They're gonna fit on most desks, but if you can't fit them on your desk, you can also pop them on some microphone stands. Now, as we all know, with smaller monitors, you will have less low frequency response. And that's certainly reflected in the charts with quite a steep drop off at 53 Hertz or so. But this could be an advantage in a small room where low frequencies can be very, very difficult to keep under control. And in any case, we don't listen with frequency charts. My experience with these monitors is that I've been constantly surprised at how much low frequency response I do actually get. And it's also nice and tight and punchy. Now I will get back to the low frequency issue at the end of this video when I give my final conclusion. So the mids and highs of these monitors are a no-brainer. They're crystal clear and it's very easy to pick out individual parts or instruments. I also ended up listening with these for several hours at a time and I have to say I didn't find them at all fatiguing. And as you get more serious about audio production, that's one of your most important considerations. 
So Eve Audio have added some DSP filters to counteract issues you may be having in the low end, the high end, or with reflections coming from your desk, etc. But even they point out this is no miracle fix. If you've got a room with very poor acoustics, at best you may be able to raise it to the level of average. So it's very important that you do think out any physical treatment you're going to give to your room as well. Having said that, I think these features are well thought out and it's really nice to have them on controls at the front of the monitors. So it probably goes without saying that the build quality on these monitors is very good indeed. The control at the front feels nice and solid, as do the connections at the back. And the overall feeling with them is that they're nice and sturdy, they feel quite heavy, and it's really nice that they've added touches like the ability to mount them on microphone stands and the magnetic grill protectors at the front for the tweeters. Along with that, you get some nice clear documentation, which gives you the feeling that EVE Audio really do care about the experience you get once you've purchased these monitors. So let me say up front, these are in no way budget monitors. Now prices vary in different parts of the world, so you should check the links in the description down below to see how much they cost in your region. Now I actually think that for most genres of music, the low end of these monitors is enough. However, if you are working in a genre which really requires you to monitor some very low frequencies, then I'd recommend you pair these with a decent set of headphones so that you can monitor that low end. I I wouldn't say you should add a subwoofer since in a small environment you're still going to have problems controlling those low frequencies. So definitely go for some decent headphones to go with these. Now if you have a larger space to work in, you can afford to have monitors with a much better low frequency response. So in that case, you might want to check out the 7 and 8 inch version of these monitors and I'll put some links in the description down below for those as well. But as I say, if you've got a decent budget and you're working in a small space, these are a really good pick. So I do hope that you've found this video helpful. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please do ask in the comments down below. Now I'd like to give a shout out to Andrew over at Electric Factory here in Australia who got these shipped out for me to take a look at. Thank you very much, sir. Also a big thank you to all of you who've been watching my videos. Now if you did like this video, you can help me out by hitting the like button. That lets YouTube know that it should show this video to other people. If you didn't like this video for any reason whatsoever, hit the dislike button twice. And if you do like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. Now, if you're interested at all in any of the gear that I use in my studio or any gear that I have used, please do check out my gear guide. The link for that is also in the description down below. And if you made it this far, right to the end of the video, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.